first of all, happy Thanksgiving to all of y'all out there. And second of all, how about them Cowboys? I'm going to be real, y'all. I do not know how to feel about how this game just went against the New York Giants. And no, I'm not talking about the outcome. I'm glad that we won. I will always be glad that we win against a division rival. Look, y'all, if we start rattling off some games in a row, y'all gonna have to put the hopes of tanking in your pocket because by the time we win maybe one more game, we are gonna be out of the running for premium draft position anyways. And they're not gonna lose like five games in a row again. So y'all can go ahead and just put that up. So at this point, if you're a Cowboys fan, be a Cowboys fan, root for your team. I know you halfway full right now. You probably halfway sleep trying to watch this show, but y'all interested to see what I think about some of the storylines that this developed out of this New York Giants game. Uh, what just happened with Sedarian Lamb? Did he just bench himself? Did he get benched? No, he didn't get benched. Jane actually made that very clear. They didn't pull him. Mike McCarthy and the coaching staff did not pull C.D. Lamb for injury reasons. Mike McCarthy and the coaching staff did not sit C.D. Lamb down or force him to be out on the last drive of the game, which essentially was the clinching drive of the game because had the Cowboys not secured that first down on that drive, the Giants had an opportunity to go down and either tie the game or try and win the game in dramatic fashion on Thanksgiving. So it was an important enough possession to where you would think your number one receiver, the second highest paid receiver in the NFL, no, we don't pocket watch, but we're just stating the importance of who C.D. Lamb is. I'm not using that to try to degrade him and be weird. No, that's just how important that dude is. That's how much of a stud he is and how much of an impact he is when he's on that field. He wasn't on the field for that last drive. Why? What was going on with that? We're going to talk about that in a second. The defense, the defense, the defense. It was the Giants, but still. The defense, we, we, we have very clearly seen the development of an up-and-coming superstar in the NFL by way of the Marvion Overshown. It's undeniable now. It's not a flash in the pan. It's not just a dude coming out hot. This is the way that man plays football. He makes big plays. He's in the area around big plays when they are being made. He's just a big play player, period. The offensive line, why is Terrence still all of a sudden starting to look better? And does it have anything to do with one of the guys that's not in the lineup anymore? And speaking of one of the guys that's not in the lineup, what about the other guy that consistently finds himself out of the lineup at some point for some reason or another? This rings alarms in my head as it pertains to our rookie left tackle, our first round draft pick, Tyler Guyton, someone I've been very, very supportive of all season long. But now I think it's fair that we ask some questions about just the future of who Tyler Guyton is going to be for the Cowboys organization, or is he just going to be a guy that's going to give us memories of a watered down version of another guy that couldn't stay on the field? Why does Big Mike hate running the ball so much? There was just there was just a lot going on in this game. Let's get right into it, rapid fire fashion. I know y'all trying to get back to those things given plays. So first things first, Dallas Cowboys beat the New York Giants 27 to 20. It really wasn't that close, but it did get kind of close towards the end. The Cowboys were in comfortable control for the majority of this game, primarily in the second half. Um, initially in the first half, the Giants were threatening to make it more of a contest because, man, Cooper Rush is just a liability out there. If he ain't trying to dig holes by way of using a football and throwing it into the ground, that man is begging someone to pick a ball off. Bro. Cooper Rush threw a whole flock of ducks on several drives in this game against the New York Giants. And, and God bless his heart, man. Cooper is doing everything in his ability that he can do to help this team win. But gosh, it's very clear that his ability is, in fact, limited as it pertains to what he can actually do to impact winning. Cooper Rush right now is the definition of a bus driver. He's coming to work on time. He's clocking out maybe about five to 10 minutes after his shift is over. He's a good employee, but damn it, he is the definition of a bus driver right now. And please, please don't find yourself in a situation where that man has to throw the ball more than 10 yards down the field, where you might want to hold your breath, get a tank of oxygen and hold on because it's going to be a rocky ride. Because, bro, I just cannot stand watching Cooper Rush throw the ball down the field. It looks like he just throws it up into the sky and hope that God plucks it from in the air and drops it down where it's supposed to be. That's what I call a prayer ball. That's what Cooper Rush does regularly. He throws prayer balls all day long, bro. So Cooper Rush, 
thank you. You're doing an excellent job again of helping this defense and the run game yet again carry you through a period of time against weaker competition because that's what this is. It's still New York Giants. We ain't going to get carried away. Them boys is 2 and 10. They got the same amount of wins as you got booty cheeks. So that's exactly what they are. Booty cheeks. We are not about to overevaluate this win, y'all. It's the Giants. All right. So 21 of 36, 195, 58.3 completion percentage, 82.5, and one touchdown. And it really should have been about six interceptions, bro. Cooper Rush, thank you for your services, man. Just goodness gracious. Please give us a chance to fairly evaluate Jonathan Mingo, bro. Give that man some actual balls he can catch, bro. Give him some catchable balls so we can see if this man is an NFL receiver. Receiver, or if he's worth Jerry Jones them trading away another fourth round pick for Coop. Damn. At this point, that's all I want you to do, bro. Help us see if Jerry old ass made another mistake, man. Rico, you are balling. Almost too much, though. Mike McCarthy don't like it. And honestly, as fans, we sh probably shouldn't like it either because he keep putting up these type of games. 22 carries, 112 yards, one touchdown, 5.1 yard per carry, 22 yard rush. Hey, man. He is going to end up giving Jerry Jones old decrepit ass another reason to say, oh, we don't need to draft the Ashton Jensen. We, he, have you seen that Rico guy that we have there in Dallas already? He, he's a good, he's a pretty good back by his own rights. I do not want to hear nothing like that when it comes draft time in April of 2025, bro. We are not trying to hear that. Jerry, go get us a real lead back for the next four or five years, man. Rinse, wash, repeat. Go get us a real back, bro. Stop making us run around with dudes that are overachieving, man. Like, straight up. I mean, Rico, you are balling. You are balling. And I would love to keep you around, but, brother, I just... Ooh, we need some life insurance. We need some security in this mug, bro. You a good time, bro. You a good guy to have and hang around, man. But we need to have somebody that's worth putting a ring on it, bro. And Rico, you, you, I'm just, I, I, it's just something about you, bro. It's just something about you. I don't know if it's the fact that you stitched back in your dreads or if you got to know, you know, you're a playboy with it. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that stitch in their dreads, I don't know if they can be trusted. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is a joke. Let me relax. I will end up probably seeing this man in public one day. Do not punch me in my face, Rico. He's balling. And, and this should have been going on all season long. And this is just another indictment of Mike McCarthy being too late on the trigger, bro. Just way too late on the trigger. Zeke got one carry in this game. I know Zeke is ready to end it all. He probably getting drunk right now, bro. Zeke is not with it no more. There is no way this is what Zeke thought he was signing up for when he came back to Dallas. Straight up. Kevonte Turpin ended up being our leading receiver today. Anytime that is happening, you know Cooper Rush is probably the quarterback. Man, what is going on? C.D. Lamb, six targets, two receptions, 39 yards. Let's get into it because C.D. <sighs> C.D. had an interesting day. C.D. was dropping the ball. But I'm not mad at C.D. for dropping the ball because C.D. is nursing an A.C. joint injury in his shoulder. And I don't know if you know where that mug is, but that's like right in this area right here, right? It's like right in this area. And if you try to do this, do like this, swing your arms running, and then try to stretch out to catch a ball or to clamp down and, and, and grip something strong enough to where another grown man can't knock your arm down. And do, you, you get where I'm going at with this? I'm not blaming CD for this, bro. He is gutting it out through his injury, and I don't think that it's reasonable to expect a, a human being that's not out there on cocaine. It's not fair to expect a human to go out there without being in that type of state to think that, that they're going to be okay and they're going to be able to play through that in a position that requires you to use that part of your body extensively. So it's like he benched himself or he took himself out the game because they already said, Jane reported, Mike McCarthy them, didn't take him out the game for injury purposes, didn't take him out the game for performance reasons or anything else like that. CD just kind of was on the sideline and you can kind of see him mouthing to a coach he was talking to, something along the lines of I effed up or something like that. Um, I think CD was punishing himself. I think he took himself out the game. I think he may have done it because he felt like he was hurting the team, whether it be because he was trying to play through an injury that was hampering him too much to where he couldn't be dependable for the team. I I'm choosing to believe that. I just, I just don't know what other reason that CD Lamb would take himself out of the game because that's what happened, y'all. He didn't, the coach didn't tell him the training staff didn't tell him there was no injury report they didn't tell him yes we all know about his shoulder we all know about his shoulder don't go in the comments and be like it's probably because this show we all know about his shoulder we're talking about why was he playing and then he stopped playing 
and and the coaches aren't the ones that forced him to stop playing was it because the injury was just too much to manage the pain from the injury was too much to manage if that's the case cd lamb we appreciate you bro i know you're probably trying to get to a thousand and then chill for the rest of the season we appreciate you dog uh i don't, I don't hold this game against you at all but I am going to hold out any more dialogue about that particular situation and, and just how curious that kind of played out. Just how curious that played out that you weren't out there on a very, very important drive. Um, I'm going to hold any more of my commentary for that for after we get some more answers, we hear some of your responses to the reporters or whatever it may be. And then we'll probably have another segment talking specifically about that because I think that Barring something crazy, barring a crazy reason coming out for him not being on that field, I think that uh, there's some positivity that needs to be shared as it pertains to some of the growth that we've seen a couple of guys go through this season on the offensive side and defensive side of the ball. Speaking of the defensive side of the ball, a couple more guys had another, another very strong showing. Yeah, so Micah had another one and a half sack type of day. The Marvion Overshone absolutely balled out, had an interception, pick six return for a touchdown. Um, beautiful play to me, probably a defensive player of the year candidate because it was just all fluid and one motion, very smooth. One of those real satisfying type of plays to see. And the Marvion Overshone is absolutely a superstar. And I think I'm willing to go out on this limb and say this right now. I cannot wait for the day that the Marvion Overshone's personality is the one that takes over the identity of the Dallas Cowboys defense. I'm not saying that to disrespect Michael Parsons. I think Michael Parsons is one of those guys that is capable of being individually great on a scale and on a level that other players can't dream to, to achieve, right? But I don't know if Michael Parsons is the type of player that you can count on or you want to depend on to kind of impart his, his personality and his demeanor, his approach on the rest of the team. I'm just, I, I just, I'm just putting that out there. I'm talking about just approach from an all-around perspective. Just an all-around perspective. I think you want your team, your defensive side of the ball, to more so embody the spirit of a DeMarvion Overshawn. And I can't wait for the day that his superstardom thrusts him into that position to where he really can impart more of his spirit into this defense, into this team, into the culture of this team and his voice has more of a say and his play means more and, and, and his status on the team dictates that as well if y'all understand what i'm saying there again it's no disrespect to michael parsons i think just the marvion overshone everything about the guy man everything about the guy is what you want in a defensive player and 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 how they approach the game and the nastiness and the passion and the joy and just the energy that he plays with on every single play. There was a play early in the game where Michael Parsons absolutely looked like he gave up on chasing uh, Drew Locke. And I know there's no way that that man is faster than Michael, but there was just situations. I'm not accusing him of quitting, and I'm just saying there's situations, man, where I feel like Michael Parsons has some tendencies to display some front runner isms a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He's a great, great player, but. You know, he started to do most of his work and really started to flash the most. His jersey numbers started to flash the most after the team had already kind of built up a league and the team was in a in a more of a comfortable position. He wasn't playing bad. He wasn't doing anything negative or anything. He was still getting some pressures, but he wasn't necessarily making those those impact go home plays. The Marvion Overson is the guy that put us in the league. He's the one that put a, gave us that 13 points so that we could actually have a touchdown lead over the Giants and be in position to actually have some cushion and play them a little differently and force them to play the game differently. So to me, the Marvion Overshone was a star of Thanksgiving. He should have been the MVP um, of Thanksgiving. And I, again, I'm just very excited to continue to see this guy grow and, and continue to see him make plays. I think at this point, there's not a lot of reasons to want to watch Cowboys football, but I think watching guys like the Marvion Overshone and some of the other guys on this team are definitely one of those reasons. Couple of really sad happenings though. Uh, Josh Butler, the standout undrafted guy from last week, he went down with a non contact injury to his knee. So prayers up for him and a friend of the show, Wanye Thomas, man. He also went down with a knee injury and he looked like he absolutely was just, he was thriving in pain and it didn't look good. And all I have to say to Wanye Thomas, 
as it pertains to the path that he's about to face because he's all he's one of those guys that was kind of a fringe guy he's one of those guys that he didn't have a contract guaranteed he didn't have his future guaranteed his his future his career isn't guaranteed right so all i'm gonna say is this just from coming in contact with you and having a conversation with you for the period of time that we did and kind of getting to know you in that moment i will say this you are a genuine and a humble human being and the humility that your journey has made you learn to live with oozes off of you when, when speaking to you so i'll just say that god got you, you you're going to be perfectly fine um just just don't lose faith i know you're not i know you you come from a strong strong family background don't lose faith continue working and do what you do bro do what you do god got you you know uh but we lost a couple of guys this game tyler guyton again went out and i'm starting to get worried about tyler guyton I'm starting to get worried because Tyler Guyton has left the game way too many times and more times than I can ever remember in recent memory seeing anybody's offensive lineman leaving the game consistently week in and week out and getting these knickknack injuries is that's keeping him off the field for plays at a time and it's it it's it, it, at this point is almost worse than what Tyron Smith was doing because at least we knew when Tyron was out. Tyler Guyton, you would think he's going to be there playing and he's going to be getting reps. He's going to be getting better. And then it's like, he's out. And we got another guy playing. And then we got another guy playing. It's like a swinging door. It's a revolving door at that left tackle position. And it's very, very scary. And I'm not really sure what it is. I don't know if he needs to put on some more weight because he does. His frame does not seem like it's necessarily built to withstand the, the the throws of an NFL season, a full NFL season right now. So I don't know if you need to put on some more weight, uh, muscle-wise, or just bulk in general, or what it may be, but he's getting way too many knick-knack injuries. And on top of that, he just hasn't had the best showing. The last few weeks, he's gotten better. Each week, he's gotten better. He's had some good showings, um, but he's just been getting injured a lot, and that's scary. Um, but we'll talk about all that and more when we come back to attack on Cowboys, but we steal the same old Cowboys, and we are now five and seven and firmly, firmly in the hunt for the playoffs, y'all. We firmly in the hunt for the playoffs. Look at the playoff standings. A couple of losses by a couple of teams, and we're gonna be like one game out. I'm just saying. Calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, am I still the ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still them boys. Hey! Woo! Oh, shut up, my boy. Shut up. Hey! I'm still them boys.